Hello, my name's Reed and I'm an iForge rep. In this video, we're going to be looking at laser cutters. Laser cutters can be used to cut and engrave sheet material, usually plywood, MDF, or acrylic. These machines can cut very accurately and with intricate detail. There are three types of operation this machine can do. Cuts, which cut all the way through the material on a vector path. Vector engraves, which follow a vector path but only lightly mark the surface. And raster engraves, which fill in an area by rapidly moving forwards and back to engrave blocks of space. Here in the iForge we have three laser cutters, two LS6090 Pros with a bed size of 600 by 900 millimeters, and one VLS660 which is a bed size of 450 by 800. The main risk when using the laser cutter is fire, and this is why you should never leave the machine unattended. Small flames following the laser are common when cutting, but if you think it's getting out of hand, press the emergency stop button and alert a rep. Whilst the machine is running, you should always keep the lid closed and the extraction on. Once it has finished cutting, wait until the smoke clears before opening the lid and removing your work. There's a list of acceptable materials on the iForge training website and in the iForge. Before cutting, ensure your materials on this list. Some materials to avoid are PVC as it creates toxic chlorine gas, ABS as it melts instead of cutting, polystyrene slash polypropylene foam as it catches fire, and carbon fiber or fiberglass as it creates harmful fumes. As always, if in doubt, ask a rep. Now we're going to take a look at the LS690 Pro laser cutters. First open up Laser Cut 5.3 which should be on the desktop or pinned to the taskbar. Here you can draw basic shapes and lines but you probably want to import a drawing you've already created. Files must be in the DXF format to be used with this software. Go to File, then Import and find your drawing to import. This will put your drawing on the plan view of the bed so you can see the size relative to the bed. A blue dot near the drawing indicates where the laser will treat as the origin. To resize your file, select all the lines and press Ctrl G. Specify either X or Y direction and use the three dots to keep the same ratio. It is usually necessary to unite lines on the drawing. This is especially important for doing raster engraving as raster engraving needs a closed shape. To do this, select your drawing, go to tools and select unite lines. A pop-up will ask for the tolerance, 0.01 is the default value. The next thing to do is to colour your lines. Each colour corresponds to a different cut parameter and these can be seen and changed in the upper right hand corner. Each cut type should be their own colour, so all cuts are one colour, all vector engraves another and all raster engraves a third. More colours can be used if you need greater control over each individual line. The three things that are important to change are mode, speed and power. The other settings are usually fine at their default and do not need to be changed. The parameters are changed by double clicking on the colour and the mode is changed via a drop down menu. A list of speed and power settings can be found near the computer and is a guideline for materials and sheet thickness. You can also change the order of the cuts by clicking the up and down buttons. Once you are happy the settings are correct, ensure the laser cutter is switched on by turning the key. Press the download button on the right hand side of the software, delete all and download current. This sends the file to the laser cutter. Now you should place your material onto the cutter bed. Using the arrow keys on the laser cutter itself, you can move the head of the laser to where you have placed the material. If the head isn't moving, press escape and deselect the laser cutter menu. Try not to be wasteful of materials and cut as close to the edges as you can. The height of the bed should be set to the correct focus of the laser. Using the laser height gauges found on the machine, raise or lower the bed using the buttons on the laser cutter until the height gauge lines up with the lip on the laser head. Once all of these are set, you can press the test button on the laser. Make sure there are no obstructions in the laser including your hands and arms. This will trace the outline of the design you are cutting without actually marking the material, which is useful for checking that the piece of material is big enough for what you're cutting. When you're fully satisfied with the setup, you can close the lid, make sure the extraction is switched on and begin cutting by pressing start. If at any point you need to briefly stop the machine, press start slash pause. This allows for the operation to be continued by pressing start again. If something looks extremely wrong, fire or melting material, press the emergency stop. When the cut finishes, let the extraction clear the smoke from the machine and then remove your work. Smaller pieces may have fallen through the bed slats and can be found in the tray underneath. Don't forget to use the Azo wipes to clean the bed under where you've cut your work after use. Now we'll be discussing how to use a VLS660 laser cutter. On this laser we like to use AutoCAD. You can design your parts on this software but we recommend you come with either a DWG or a DXF file. The first step is to open your file in AutoCAD. This is done via the open icon in the top left of the software and navigating to where your file is located. Your file should now be visible on the screen. The next step is to colour and fill your lines. Select your lines and go to the colour menu near the top right. 
Red lines cut, blue lines vector engrave, and black lines raster engrave. Unlike the other machines, to engrave an area on these, you must fill the area to engrave. Bring up the hatch tool by pressing H on the keyboard and press Enter. Set the hatch to solid and black, and click on the area you wish to engrave. Once you're happy with the design, you can move on to preparing for cutting. The laser cutter interface is like a printer, so you press Ctrl and P to print. On this menu, you want to select the following settings. Printer set to VLS 660. Scale in millimeters, one to one and centered. Selection set to extents or window if you're only cutting one part. All boxes on the right unticked. Then press OK, which sends the data to the laser cutter. Now open the UCP laser software and you should see your design. If the power lights on the laser cutter are off, press the power button on the top right of the laser software. When the machine turns on, be sure not to close any loading screens that pop up on the computer. Once the machine is ready, you can place your material onto the bed. By pressing focus view, you can move the laser head around. Move it to a suitable location and select relocate view. Click on one of the blue boxes on the cut file, then click move to pointer. Change back to focus view and move the head around to check that the cut fits on your material. Now you should set your material settings. Unlike the other two lasers where you must manually input laser parameters, this machine lets you specify a material and sets its parameters for you. Go to settings, then material database. For acrylics, it is plastic, acrylic, continuous cast acrylic, and then set the material thickness. MDF is natural, wood, medium density fiberboard. Plywood is natural, wood, medium, and then medium general woods. Be sure to set your thickness here, click apply and OK. After turning the extraction on, you can close the lid and press the play button to begin cutting. If at any point you need to stop the machine, press the pause button on the laser cutter. Once the cut is finished, wait until the timer counts down before removing your pieces. 